We get asked all the time about our rad power bikes, the rad minis. And we have purposely waited quite a while to do this video because we wanted to have a lot of use on these guys before we were able to tell you honestly what we think about them. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. I've got five topics on these bikes that I'm gonna answer for you guys. All right, number one, why did we choose Rad Power Bikes, specifically the Rad Mini? Well, it's because they fold up really small and they will fit inside of our van. So right here, Kurt is gonna show you how we fold these things up and then put them back together when we're done. So just so you guys know, these bikes weigh about 60 pounds. So if that's like borderline too much for you to be able to lift them up and store them in your van like we do, you can remove the battery and that's gonna bring them down to about 50 pounds. So part of the reason Kurt built this slide out drawer was because they do weigh a little bit and we wanted to make it quite a bit easier to get these things in and out of the van. So one thing we get asked a lot is how tall are these bikes when you have them folded up? Because you need to know how much room you need to have in your van if you plan on storing these inside. So. 29 and a half inches and I will put the English measurements right here on the screen for you guys I don't want to try to do the math while I'm talking to you all but you need 29 and a half inches so in our van from the floor of the garage to the bottom of the bed frame is a little over 31 inches and then Kurt built this heavy-duty slide-out drawer uh, with like four or five hundred pound you know weight slides to hold these bikes so that added a little bit of room and it just barely leaves us between the top of the drawer and the bottom of the bed frame, the exact amount of room we need to store these bikes, 29 and a half inches. It is a snug fit, but guys, the garage and the height of the bed was literally built around the height of these bikes. All right, number two, maintenance. Now, just to be honest with you guys, Kurt rides his bike a heck of a lot more than I do. I have about 200 miles on my bike and he's got almost 700. Um, when we were in Puerto Escondido for the summer, there's quite a bit of hills. We were there for five months for the coronavirus and Kurt, to keep from going stir crazy, just would go out and ride around town. So he has racked up some miles and we had to do some work on the brakes because of that. So in Puerto Escondido, he got his brakes adjusted. Um, he had to repair a flat tire where he ran over something sharp and he had to replace his chain, he broke his chain. So we have had to do a little bit of maintenance on it, but nothing that you wouldn't expect when you're taking good care of a bike. Now for me, with my 200 miles, we didn't have to do any adjustments to my brakes until last week here in San Cristobal, we found a bike shop that will work on these and was able to adjust and tighten up my brakes a little bit because I'm a big scaredy cat and I need my brakes when I'm going down a hill because I get spooked going too fast, much to the dismay of Kurt. Before I get too far away from the maintenance section, I did want to tell you, and I almost forgot, but I did want to tell you that in the United States and Canada and probably, probably most countries over in Europe and around the world, this isn't an issue. But once we got south of the border down here in Mexico, they haven't really seen bikes like this. And some of the bike shops, to be honest, get a little bit intimidated by it and don't want to work on it because it, it's a pretty cool, fancy looking bike. So when you do find a shop that's not scared to work on the brakes or do a little bit of work on your chains or whatever for you, take advantage of that. And we will be doing that before we leave San Cristobal because we did find a bike shop here where they'll do some work on them. So we are gonna get just a little routine maintenance done on both of these bikes before we leave San Cristobal. Another thing is on the Rad Power Bike website, which there's a link to that in the description of this video or you can just Google Rad Power Bikes and it'll come up. They have a great section on with videos and tips and customer service on maintaining these bikes. 
So don't let that overwhelm you. All right, number three, basic stats. Now, I just want to put a huge disclaimer out there. Obviously, I am not an e-bike expert or a bike expert in general. So these stats I'm about to give you literally come straight from the Rad Power Bikes website. And I'm going to just kind of read them off to you to give you some of the basics, some of the overview. But if you want to know more, you're going to want to go check it out on their website. So let's get into this. It is a 750 watt motor that runs this thing. There are five levels of power or pedal assist. When you turn it on, it's gonna start at number one, which means you're pedaling pretty good and this thing's just giving you a little bit of help. And it goes all the way up to number five, where this thing will run 20 miles an hour all by itself without you pedaling. It is a seven speed bike. It will take about five to six hours to recharge this battery from fully drained to full. So that's easy to get done overnight. It has cool little brake lights, a fun little headlight. One of my favorite things it has is an on-demand throttle right here on the handlebar. Basically just turn it like an old-fashioned motorcycle and it goes. You don't even have to pedal, which is pretty cool. We added this rear rack, which is nice. If you want to carry some stuff, it makes it really easy to strap some stuff down, but that is an add-on. It has a fun little horn right there. <laughs> one of my favorite things. I know it's silly, but a fun little horn. And then one more thing, guys. Mine is a step-through version of the Rad Mini. The Rad Mini is the folding bike that Rad Power makes. So mine's like an old-fashioned girl bike. You can step through. Over here on Kurtz, old-fashioned boy bike. You can't step through. So there are two different models. I personally like mine better because it's cooler and prettier. But anyway, okay, so that is the end of the basic stats. Again, if you want to see more and learn a lot more about these, just head over to their website. Number four, do we recommend these bikes? The simple answer is yes. We love these bikes. We have tested them on city streets, park sidewalks, sandy beaches, rocky trails, dirt roads, cobblestone streets, and they perform. We, um, we love these bikes. They are perfect and exactly what we needed for our journey around the world and then being able to fit into our van. Now, there are a few little drawbacks. One is when we bought these, we bought them online and had them shipped to us and we bought them with never getting to test drive them. Now, over the past year and a half to two years, Red Power Bikes has added lots and lots of test drive stations all across the country and even over in Europe and some other places. But if you're not close to one of those, you're probably still going to have to buy one of these when never riding them. But it looks like that every day they're adding new locations and you can see the test drive site locations on their website. Another drawback. I love my step through versus Kurt's old fashioned traditional boy bike, but my tires are different. They're a little bit slicker. Kurt's has a lot more knobs on them and we've both decided that we like Kurt's better for the all terrain kind of riding that we do. There are a few times that, that mine's actually felt a little slick underneath me. So when it comes time to, whenever it happens that we have to buy new tires for these because we've wore these out, I am for sure going to be getting the knobby ones. So that's really the only drawbacks, guys. These are great little bikes. They hold up well. Kurt has put some good wear and tear on his. So we feel good about recommending these for you. All right, number five, the biggie. What do these things cost? So guys, they cost right at $1,500 a piece, 1,500 US dollars. Um, they're worth it. They're, they're great little bikes. And if you go to our website, which is thechilldays.com, which there will be a link to in the description of this video, you will see a place where you can save $50. So if you go to their website and you check it out and you're getting ready to pull the trigger on buying one of these, head on over to our website and get that little coupon and save 50 bucks. Cause guys, 50 bucks is a good thing. So with that, guys, that's our Rad Power Bikes. I hope I answered a lot of your questions. This is a very layman term type uh, video and that's all I got. We love these little guys. Check them out. And also one more thing is this is not the only model they have. So if you don't necessarily need the folding model, they have tons of others. 
when we were on our Farewell USA tour, we actually stopped by their showroom in Seattle and got to take a look around and there's some really cool models that they have. So if the folding bike isn't what you need, don't turn off of, of Rad Power Bikes. Head on over there and see what they got. So with that, if you want to see if these things can actually make it all the way around the world with us, you're gonna to wanna to subscribe to our channel. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you know when future videos are coming out. And if you wanna help support our journey, guys, you can do that by joining our YouTube membership page. There's a link to that in the description as well. And with that, we'll see you guys in a few days. Cheers.